Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. And welcome into another episode of the Damn Podcast here on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network and powered by BeaverBlitz.com. I'm your host, Carter Baines, joined by Angie Machado, publisher of BeaverBlitz.com, for this emergency episode of the podcast here on Selection Sunday, the afternoon of December 4th, when the final college football play- college football playoff rankings are released. All of the New Year's Six Bowls were announced, and throughout the afternoon, the rest of the bowl games, Oregon State ranked number 14 in that final top 25, and the Beavers are headed to Las Vegas for the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl against the Florida Gators out of the SEC. Angie and I are going to talk about that, talk about the impact on the recruiting trail. Uh, We'll talk about what Jonathan Smith said after the selection was made, and then we'll answer some of your questions damn questions at the end of the episode but angie let's check in with you and uh and how you're feeling about your upcoming trip to las vegas yeah um got everything booked it's kind of been a whirlwind day um carter did you get your affair booked yet not yet okay that's uh that's as soon as we as we're done yeah it's been a busy day what carter what were your feelings on that like four or five hour espn show i think they need to condense that a little bit they've done it for the last handful of years now and it just doesn't get any better um I, you know, I, I get the whole building suspense thing and it takes a while for the bulls to kind of, you know, go through their, their picking process and whatnot, but there's no reason we have to wait two hours in between the top four being announced and us seeing where the rest of the top 25 fall. Yeah. Yeah. It was a long morning, but Vegas. So um, I know that there was a lot of talk about the holiday bowl. First of all, let me just say I'm super stoked. It's not sun bowl. Yep. So UCLA gets to play Pittsburgh in in the Sun Bowl this year. Uh, let's run through the Pac-12 Bowls yeah, real quick. Yeah. So in, in case you haven't heard yet, you've got Utah in the Rose Bowl after beating USC in the Pac-12 title game. USC, by product of being uh, still pretty highly ranked after that loss, goes to the Cotton Bowl against Tulane. Then in the Alamo Bowl, Washington gets Place to play Texas. Texas. Uh, Holiday Bowl, Oregon plays North Carolina. Now, this was a point of, you know, there, there had to be some working out there because Notre Dame was in the running for that, um, you know, being a, an ACC partner in, in quotes there. Um, but Oregon does get North Carolina in the Holiday Bowl. Oregon State in the Las Vegas Bowl against Florida out of the SEC. Again, a, a 500 team, sub 500 in conference play. We'll talk about the opponent in just a minute. Um, UCLA in the Sun Bowl. The Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl, of course, uh, against Pittsburgh. And then Washington State goes to the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl and will play Fresno State, who won the Mountain West Championship yesterday. So that's your Pac-12 Bowl yeah. slate. We're here to talk about Oregon State, though, um, which will be playing in just under two weeks from, from the time yeah. we record this. December 17th, it's one of those early ones. Uh, again, Angie, last year, the, the LA Bowl was on the early side of things as well, that Saturday before Christmas. Um, let's start with that. Your thoughts on playing on the early side, because of course you lose out on some of the practices, but you know, you get done before signing day. There are some, some perks to this. Um, but of course it has its down, it's, it's downsides as well. But, um, you know, some of the upsides you're playing in prime time on ABC on a Saturday, but I I guess what are kind of your thoughts on, on whether the the positives outweigh the negatives there? Yeah. I mean, I want to say positive. I mean, negative. Yes. It's not ideal because no matter what other people in the media media will say, it is important to get those practice days for the younger players, the freshmen, because those practices aren't going to be taken up by your veterans, first and second teamers the whole time. You get those 15 practices and you let those younger guys go. Um, it's it's really, really important to their development. So that's, that is a downside. Another downside is Oregon State is going to have to really kind of rush through this. And they're also going to be missing next week, the entirety of next week. That is a, is a contact period for recruiting. So, Right now, Coach Smith and his staff are all on the road um, doing all their in-home visits. They're going to have to condense all those in-home visits to this, um, you know, this week. I, some of the coaches will be coming back Wednesday. The rest of them will come back Thursday. 
it does coincide with finals. So from that standpoint, it's okay. So Oregon State players are off doing finals right now. Coaches are out recruiting. They reconvene Thursday. Now, I hope they're all feeling better because there's been a flu bug going through the, the Valley Center. So um, hopefully they're all with this rest feeling better, resting, and uh, all the bumps and bruises and, and banged up players are, are getting a little bit healthier. Um, but they'll reconvene, have a couple days of practice in Corvallis, and then a week from tomorrow. Um, so what, what day would that be? The 12th? Monday the 12th. 12th is when they will fly out to Vegas. Um, so that they may host some – they're, they're hoping to host an official visitor, at least one, maybe two this coming weekend. So that that is big, but it's also tough as they're trying to get things uh, organized. So it's a really tight, tight turnaround, as opposed to if they were playing, say, in the Holiday Bowl, which was the 28th, they could have kind of had all this week, next week, kind of started practicing, had signing day, and then left, you know, right a little before Christmas. Um, the other upside, though, is that the the players will get a nice break. Those players playing in the, on the 28th aren't going to get a big break because they'd be right back in school. Um, classes start the 4th, I believe, of January. So they will get to go home and get a nice you know, week and a half, two-week vacation with their families. So that's another positive. So um, positives, negatives. The other huge positive, I think, in my mind, Carter, you can disagree or, or agree, is looking at the opponents. You know, If we were at the Holiday Bowl, Oregon State would be matched up. Now, I love the matchup with Notre Dame. I thought that was kind of a a great story from storylines. Oregon State's beaten them twice, including Jonathan Smith's 41 to nine win over them in the Fiesta Bowl. Some good storylines there. They're playing North Carolina, or Oregon will be playing North Carolina in that bowl. Oregon, which to me is kind of a, a downer. Oregon State gets an SEC opponent. Yeah, not very good SEC opponent, had kind of a down year. However, it's Florida, and it's a huge recruiting area for Oregon State. They have two commits there now, they're chasing a third for this cycle. Um, it's, it's so important. And, you know, a year from now, nobody's going to remember whether the Florida Gators were six and six, or if they were 10 and three, 10 and two, um, if Oregon state can beat them, that's all that's going to matter. And it's still a, a pretty solid Florida team. I mean, a, a six and six team in the sec is, is always pretty good. Um, of course the Gators have, they have a couple of tough losses on their schedule. Vanderbilt being one, uh, with the Commodores getting, uh, I believe back to back SEC wins, if I'm not mistaken, um, or at the very least, you know their their first SEC win uh, in in a couple of years, and and one of them coming against the Gators. So, you know, it's it's a team that has had some highs and had some lows. You can go back to the season opener with the Gators Utah. beating Utah down in the swamp, and you know, obviously Oregon State lost to the Utes by a pretty hefty margin in Salt Lake City. So. There's something to be said for for what Florida has done this year on the winning side of things as well, playing in the SEC. It's it, it's a good opponent, you know. Don't get me wrong. Anytime you play in a bowl of this caliber, um, you know, a step up from from that bottom rung, um, you're going to play a good team regardless. Um, and and I do think a, a, you know potentially a six and six Florida team could be better than going to the Holiday Bowl and and playing uh, an ACC and a, an ACC opponent from a, a conference that has been really down this year. So I, yeah. I think you're spot on the, the brand name that Florida is um, getting Oregon state on TVs in the state of Florida, which continues to be a huge recruiting base. And, and that Oregon state has tapped into uh, actually quite a bit the last couple yeah. of years. Uh, I, I think all of these things are important and frankly, a big reason why Oregon state playing Florida in this game is I think better than playing a, a Mississippi state or something like that Although as, I was much, excited as, as for, much as we would have yeah. loved to have Mike Leach at a press conference. I mean, Mike Leach or Lane Kiffin, I was really kind of rooting for Ole Miss too, but um, I just think from a recruiting standpoint, it is, a, it's a huge chance. And I think for the players, you know, this isn't trying to get up against uh, Mont or um, Utah state, a Mountain West yeah. team. This is a, an SEC opponent and this is a chance for them to do some things. Florida's defense isn't, great their skill position players are really good but then there's talk that they could be down their starting quarterback Richardson uh their sec backup quarterback Jalen Kitna has been kicked off the team so they may be to third string which is a walk-on is what I'm hearing um we'll we'll get into that more we'll we have other we'll have another damn podcast before um so this is really just kind of our thoughts kind of a, a general overview because Carter and I haven't dug down and really dig dug into uh, the Gators yet but it'll be an interesting game 
Yeah, I do know that Florida's defense leaves a little bit to be desired, and I think is something Oregon State could take advantage of, particularly in the running game. Uh, the Gators have not been particularly great at stopping the run, and obviously that's Oregon State's biggest offensive strength, um, dominating in the trenches and and utilizing Damian Martinez, who is healthy and ready to go for this game. Jonathan Smith said uh, just about an hour ago, Angie, as we're sitting here at 443, uh, Let's talk about some of the things that Jonathan said in that in that Zoom press conference. The first Zoom presser I think we've had in a year since uh, since the LA Bowl, actually. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I was like, I couldn't remember how to raise my hand. It took me a minute yeah, there. To... I know I had to search around <laughs> the, the toolbar at the bottom to figure it out. Um, but he did say that Damian Martinez is good to go. Um, actually, some good news for Oregon State. Rajon Wright, as of now, is the only player to opt yeah. out of the bowl game. I'm sure, that, you know, it's it's possible we'll see another one or two. Um, but with Rajon announcing his intention to, clear, to, to declare for the draft, um, stating, I believe, that he has representation already, um, that makes him ineligible. But Jonathan did say that he expected Ray to be on the sidelines and potentially Luke, Mus Luke Musgrave as well. So uh, Luke will not be participating, but look for him too on the sideline. Another player we know will not participate is Chance Nolan quarterback who entered the transfer portal this week and Jonathan said he had a chance to to speak with Chance a couple of weeks ago which was was interesting yeah. to me um might you know kind of made it seem like maybe he hasn't been with the team which has been our suspicion but which uh, is interesting we, we don't have any Monday, we, don't think, we don't have anything like solid to report yeah there. it was funny though Carter because you know Monday we got word from a source that he had left the program yeah. I reached out through the sports information director who spoke to Smith and said oh no we haven't heard anything yeah, well, sounds like there was a discussion a yes, couple of weeks ago, yes. uh, and and they wish Chance Nolan nothing but the best, and and, and they wish Rajon, of course, that nothing but the best as well as he heads to the NFL. Um, Jonathan made it sound like you know any guy that that decides to say, hey, I you know not going to do this, I'm off to the NFL, I got to protect my body, you know, build up for the combine, whatever. Um, he's going to support those decisions, and and frankly, it's it's something that they're not. Uh, in, entirely disappointed in as they want to see those guys thrive at the next level. Yeah. And he, he also, you know, wished chance well. And I mean, these both chance and Rajon did a lot for this program and yeah. have, have brought them kind of where they are. That's another thing I, I think we need to talk about too, Angie is, you know, I've, I've seen some fans, you know, Twitter, Twitter can be a dark place sometimes. Um, you know, maybe not, not thrilled with some of the contributions that chance Nolan made or not thrilled with the decision um, that, that Rajon Wright made to, to leave the team early and, and go, you know, pursue his, his NFL career. You got to remember what these guys gave to the program. I mean, yeah. Rajon for one, building this defense into one of the best in the conference, if not the best in the PAC 12 chance for improving steadily as a quarterback over his what year and a half, almost mm -hmm. two full years as a starter, um, continuing to build up wins for this Oregon state football program at the most important position on the field. These guys have made all sorts of contributions and by all means deserve to go to a place that makes them happy, whether that's the NFL, whether that's a different program. Um, so I, I think, you know, anytime you see guys leave the program and this happens at, at every program, everywhere, um, there can be some, you know, there can be some saltiness across the fan base. And I just want to remind everybody that, <laughs> that these are real people and that, uh, and that they're making these decisions, um, in, in their best interests. And it's, it's not really selfish because I, I think some of us would do the same thing. Well, exactly. It's, it's, it's interesting, especially with the NFL guys. I mean, your body can only take so many hits and you're yeah. one bad injury away from not realizing that dream of NFL. So um, you got to take it while you can chance. Absolutely. You know, here's a kid that he was the star. He came in for Jebbia and then had to earn the spot again, earns the spot again, and then has to earn it this year coming in i mean it's it's been a constant battle and so um i think he probably saw the writing on the wall the coaches have all met with all the players and and oregon state coaches are going to be honest with someone they're not going to tell someone something so um if he is ready to go he's um you know best of luck finding a, a home that you know suits him speaking of florida i think we talked about you know some of the the name value that the gators bring to this matchup with oregon state but without doing a, a full deep dive into the Gators, which we will do over the next week and a half as we preview this thing, um, Angie, on, on the football field alone, 
what's what are you kind of anticipating in a game against a, a physical SEC team, which, like you said, uh, is always going to have great talent at the skill possessions. Um, we know what we know about the defense and, and that it's possible that Florida will have some opt outs as well. But I, I mean, as this game unfolds, talk, talk about the importance of winning it, um, maybe how you think Oregon State will have to have to game plan in order to do so. Uh, what are you expecting as far as gameplay and and implications as far as winning and losing is concerned? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I've seen a few parts of Florida's game, so I need to go back and watch. But the the first thing I think of when I think of SEC besides great skill position players is great lines, and so um, I want to see their lines. But typically, uh, SEC defensive fronts, especially, are big. They're physical. They're fast. Um, so that's going to be something that I'm going to keep an eye on. I'd like to see Oregon State be able to run the ball on their defense, um, especially since we've seen the struggles passing the ball. But um, I do think the coaching staff will have a good plan in place for that. Defensively, I'm excited because I think Florida has some talented wide receivers, and I'm excited to see them go up against um, you know Oregon State secondary, even without Rajon. Totally agree. And if Oregon State does win, that gives you a 10th win in the column for just the third time in program history. And that's Jonathan, huge, yeah. Carter. Jonathan Smith was actually asked about this, and he said, you know, the, the players are aware of, of what's yeah. at stake, and it's it's important. It's, again, a testament to the program building that, uh, that they have accomplished here. Yeah. But I just think, you know, to cap off to cap off what has been quietly, I think, as it's gone along, one of the most special seasons in Oregon State football history with a 10th win, and to do it against an SEC opponent, um, just kind of proving your worth a little bit there in that bowl game. Uh, you know, I, I think it would be fitting. And again, I've I've said this the last couple of weeks, but we're, Angie, we're going to come back on here in a couple of weeks after the season's over, and we're going to talk about how we just witnessed one of the greatest Oregon State football seasons of all time. And if they get that 10th win, just confirms it as as being one of the three best I mean, we sit here on December 4th and Oregon State's, Oregon State's ranked 14th in the country. That's the highest the Beavers have been ranked since uh, the middle of the 2012 season. So, Carter, it, do you think fans stuff. are over? I mean, I, I think this is going to be one of those seasons that maybe hits people a little later. I mean, it just doesn't seem like people are really truly appreciating. Yeah. Um, if, if I was to tell you before the season that the Beavers would be 9-3, and three, would have beat Oregon, would finish the regular season 14th in the CFP ahead of um, UCLA and Oregon and playing in the Vegas bowl against Florida would for that chance for the 10th win. Would that, would you have been excited? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I picked Oregon state to win seven games. Now I'll say I had, I had, you know, nine, 10 wins at kind of the, the ceiling of, of possibility. I, I think I set a range of like, I could see anything from seven to 10 wins and sure enough, it's, it's on the, the higher end. I think, Going into the year, I said Oregon State needs a couple of things to go its way if it's going to get 10 wins. It needs to stay healthy, for one. Um, the defense has to take the step forward that we expected it to with Trent Bray at the helm. Of course it did, and, and now here we are with Trent Bray earning an extension through 2024. We didn't have a chance to talk about that yeah, on the podcast yeah. yet, um, so we could potentially do that before we move on to questions. Um, but all of those things that I kind of thought would have to go Oregon State's way for that to happen have happened. Mm -hmm. And here we are with with Oregon State sitting at nine and three and a chance to get to ten wins against a Florida team that's sitting at five hundred. It's it's impressive stuff all the way okay, but, around. Okay, with all this stuff, would you have believed that this all this stuff would have happened for Oregon State with subpar quarterback play? Yeah, definitely would not have seen that coming. Yeah. Um, I, I think you and I both in, in our predictions for the season said if Oregon State's going to reach its potential, um, you need to see more consistent play from the quarterback position. And I think we would have expected it to be Chance Nolan all year probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, credit to credit to Ben Wilbranson for coming in and 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 being a one loss starter for you know playing half of the playing more than half of the season. He's only lost once as a starter. So. Um, yeah, good, good on him, and, and good on Oregon State for getting into this position. Angie, do you want do you want to talk about Trent Bray's extension before we move on to damn questions? We're going to aim for about a half hour on this episode. Yeah, it's going to be a so shorter we don't want to spend episode. Too much time here. So yeah, I mean, so Trent Bray was extended a two year deal, um, puts him in the like seven hundred, I believe, for next year seven fifty. I, I thought it should be more, to be completely honest. I thought he's earned that, but um, from everything I've heard, he's happy, he's excited. I mean, that's a about a two hundred thousand dollar a year raise. Carter, would you, you'd be thrilled with that. So, so would I. So um, what he has done in one short year, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do in another year or two. 
I think it's well deserved too. I mean, yeah. this guy was a, a semifinalist or a, a, a nominee a semi, or something, yeah. quarterfinalist for the Broyles Award, which goes to the to the nation's top assistant coach, and it's his first year as a quarter uh, yeah. a coordinator. So, um, very much well deserved. And and if if you need any um any confirmation, just go look at the stats last oh. year for Oregon State's defense. Go look at the run defense and the turnovers, and I mean. Run run defense is one that stands yeah. out the most. I yeah, think, but, yeah. Um, point totals. I mean, it's. Point. I mean, all it's of it's remarkable. right it's across remarkable. the board. It's just and just the way they're playing. You know, it used to be like, oh gosh, the defense is on the field. Now it's like you look forward to the defense being on the yeah. field, which no, I think gives us some confidence in Oregon State's ability to go up against an SEC team like this and 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 go toe to toe physically and. Um, you know, talent wise on the edges. And and that's it's, just it's what going it, to be it's gonna be a fascinating matchup. I think it will. You know, if you throw the records out the window and you just say Oregon State, Florida, it sounds pretty evenly matched to me. Yeah, yeah I, I I do. I and defense wins championships. I mean that's bottom line. We say it all the time. And you know, that's look at USC. Look at USC and, and look at defense. even Oregon. I yeah. mean, Oregon State did run for you know, but at down the stretch, Oregon's defense let up and Oregon State's came on. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for Trent Brake. It's uh, very well deserved. And, you know, that's another, that'll be another story long line we're going to be watching here in the months ahead is just can Jonathan Smith keep the staff together? Um, and there's so many things going on in the offseason. So it's never a dull moment. Let's take a quick break on the audio side. If you're listening to us on a podcast app, we're going to uh, to pause for the, the commercial break, and then we'll be right back with damn questions. All right, Angie, let's start with, uh, where do you want to start? You've got, you, you kind of, well, I want to give a heads up uh, first. I, yeah, I'm going to do heads, but I see in the comments, your dad has given us a heads up <laughs> that the basketball team is up 11 at half against USC. There we so go. Um, thank you. We appreciate the update because we were going to go earlier in the pod. Um, and then Jonathan Smith had his availability. So we're kind of double dipping here. So oh. thank you, Brad, for the update. But let's do a couple of damn questions. It's been a while. Right. I posed this in the Lodge at Beaver Blitz. So um, let's go. Well, we'll go with Mr. G. Gray. Um, do you think the coaches will focus solely on the bowl game or split preparation with recruiting for the early signing day, which is December 21st? You want to, Jonathan did address this somewhat. Yeah. So it's, that's one of the, the things you run into when you play these early bowl games. You have to do both because last year, Angie and I were, you know, I was down in LA. She was uh, back up in Oregon, still hadn't gone down to LA yet for signing day. You know, I'm sitting in a hotel room. We're on Zoom with Jonathan Smith. He's walking through all the signees. I had seen one of the signees at practice that day after he signed his NLI. Um, and it was just kind of an interesting thing where we're like, okay, well, these guys are in bull mode and, oh yeah, they're signing like 15 guys to come play to, for the program next year. Um, this year it falls on December 21st, like Mr. G Gray said, which is four days after the game. So the Beavers do actually have a chance to, to make some last minute calls, uh, last minute visits after this game, but no, they will more... not be able to do visits. That's the problem. Oh, that's right. That's so right. The, this is the problem is that. It is still a contact week next week while they're actually in Vegas. Um, they'll be in Vegas for the whole contact week. I guess they could potentially maybe get a coach to, you know, if you need to do some quick damage control. They are on the road right now uh, making all of their in-home visits. Yep. Um, Jonathan Smith was actually on a, a recruiting yeah. visit when we talked to him about an hour ago. He was like in his car, I think. He said he was between houses. So I don't know. So this is my guess. He's either in Texas or he's in Florida right now because I know he'll be in Texas tomorrow. Um, well, so, and we know that he's not in the Pacific time zone because yes, it was, it was still light out when we were doing it, but it was pitch black in what appeared to be his car. So, um, that is the part that worries me a little bit is that that contact period now is a whole, yeah. Oregon State has a whole week where they will not be able to be in home. Um, Jonathan did reiterate that they have great relationships with all these guys and he's not worried about it. But at the same time, you have to be a little worried because, um, yeah. Bad Brian, I'll, let's pause real quick. Uh, Brian Miller in the YouTube chat asks if there's any recruits in Vegas to go see. Uh, number Kelsey one Howell, recruit. Your number, number one, one recruit yeah. from Las Vegas. So um, I'm, I'm sure, sure he'll he be will, at a practice. I'm or sure two he or five. will be at a yes. practice or um, at the bowl game. I'm sure he'll be at the bowl game and, unless there are some conflicts there. But um, and I bet yeah, some of those an LA, important recruit in Vegas yeah, to go see. Those, to those Southern question. California guys, I'm sure will be, you know, it's, it's not too far of a drive for, you know, an Adrian yeah. Martinez or Aiden Martinez. Um, Aiden Childs. Aiden Childs, sorry. 
thinking Adrian Nebraska, Martin. <laughs> yeah, K State. I don't know where that was going. Um, so no, there's it's you know doable for those guys. All right, okay, let's Carter. move on to the next question. I'll throw it to you, Angie. Um, we, we talked a little bit already. Ron Wall asked about besides right. Anybody else be out? We've already talked about that. Um, <laughs> leave it to Beaver 1978 says, is it better to hit or stay on 16 at Blackjack? <laughs> it depends what the dealer has. Ahead of, ahead of yes. the Las Vegas Bowl. Um, <laughs> okay, never mind. There's, there's a funny one inside joke here that you... I'm, I'm seeing that too. Yeah. Um, Oh, here we go. Um, what factors, this is from W.E. Beave. What factors did the Holiday Bowl use to make their selection? Can they accept donations from schools or boosters? And I assume, I assume this question comes up because Oregon is in the Holiday Bowl and obviously, you know, there's the booster situation at, at U of O. Um, but I mean, I, I can't personally speak to how they make these decisions, but I know a lot of it comes down to team merit. They do have to look at the standings. Um, and, and for the Holiday Bowl in, in particular, they have to wait for the Alamo Bowl to make their choice. Mm -hmm. So the Alamo, Alamo Bowl takes Washington. That leaves Oregon, Oregon State, UCLA on the board. Um, Oregon, with its 7-2, and two, I believe, conference record, um, has the advantage there. Uh, but Oregon State and UCLA still in the mix because they're within one loss. So um, when you talk about the Rose Bowl takes the Pac-12 champion or next best if it goes to the playoff, then it goes Alamo, Holiday, Vegas, and then the Sun Bowl has to take the next best team available, and so does the LA Bowl. So that, I mean, that's... Carter is our resident the, expert here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, you know, the process, so to speak. Now, how they determine the attractiveness of a school, I, I think a lot of that comes back to, you know, the fan base and, and how, many got, how many people they can get to travel, um, market size for TV and whatnot, but, you know, all of that is is proprietary, so I can't necessarily speak to that, but... Um, certainly can can outline the process like I just did there. So Reese or Beave 23 has some great, two great questions. First is the next verbal commit and how many more commitments before early signing period? Um, Oregon State this past week just picked up Jermon McCoy. Um, so that's a big one. He's a cornerback out of White House, Texas. Um, he actually flipped from two, uh, Tulane. So um, Tulane is another school that made a, a New Year's Six Bowl Big, big pickup for Oregon State. He's a, you know, a 5'11", 170-pound corner for Oregon State. I do see um, there's a couple prep targets that I'm keeping close eye on. Leonard Ayu at Kahuku in Hawaii um, is one I'm watching. Um, a couple more preps that, you know, Luke Palich, who was just here for the Civil War game. Harlem Howard is down in the Pompano Beach area. Um, safety, Oregon State, I believe, was in home with him just either yesterday or today. Um, so he's one I'm watching closely. He is technically, I think he's supposed to come out this weekend for an official visit too. So definitely some guys to watch. And then also, um, I know you didn't ask, but a couple uh, JUCOs that I'm watching closely are those edge rushers. They visited back in um, October. So Nico Taylor from Hutchinson and Nana, I'm going to say his name wrong, and Yan Wu um, from Coffeeville. Um, and then Kai Wallen from American River, another edge rusher. So they are going to go hard uh, for those ju JUCO guys. Your second question, Reese or Beeve, was yeah. how aggressive will OSU, OSU be in the transfer portal? Um, okay, I don't know, Carter, if you've been paying attention to the transfer portal and the guys that are jumping in it. It is nuts. Officially opens tomorrow, tomorrow as, as we record this on Sunday. It opens on Monday, December 5th. So that's when you'll see like everything official. Yeah. A, a lot of guys, I assume, will commit um tomorrow because they officially can um but it's yeah been with, nuts. with with the new the new window system yeah. they have this is our first one and then we get another one in the spring so Oregon State's gonna be pretty aggressive for the positions that they need to fill quarterback is definitely one of their top top um ones and I will tell you I can't go into names or specifics Oregon State is swinging for the fences and so um if you heard the names that I heard that the coaches are really going after you'd be very happy Long shots probably, but um, they are going to make they're going to make a, a pitch. So um, I think Oregon State is a very attractive place for these yeah. quarterbacks when they actually look at the system um, and how much um, um, exposure. Well, in recent success. Yeah, I mean, one. they run an NFL pro style offense. The immediate playing time. Um, it's yeah. it's really an attractive destination. So there's a lot of quarterbacks going in the portal right now. So um, stay tuned. We'll keep you posted as we can. Um, 
also I, I could see, you know, it just depends. Um, I, I would personally, Carter, you probably agree with me. See him go after a, a wide receiver. Yeah. Potentially somebody, um, somebody with some size. I, I could see. The one thing I will say about quarterback is from what I've been told, they're not going after any quarterback that has no experience actually taking snaps in the college game. So they want somebody that has actually taken some snaps. Um, what we're seeing is a lot of formerly high ranked preps who have never taken a snap and aren't getting playing time going back in the portal. Yeah. Um, Oregon state needs a guy that actually can manage the game and, and help them. So and they're not who has proven that they can win and, and perform at yes. a high level as well. Yes. Um, um, so I, here's, here's one that's kind of a, a natural segue. And again, we'll, we'll probably end this thing in, in just a couple of minutes here as we're at the half hour mark now, but I, I feel like this is a good, um, opportunity to, to transfer into Matt Chiafone's question. Any word on how successful OSU collectives have been in terms of raising money? And I, I say this because this is an important piece in the transfer yeah. portal now. I mean, this is college football 2022 transfer portal and NIL. And, you know, as much as we talk about NIL at Oregon State not being used as inducement and whatnot, like. It is. It, it is because, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, they might they might not give you a bunch of money on, you know, arrival and say, hey, we'll give you this much to come to the school officially. But having the opportunities there when you get on campus is what NIL is all about. And so can Oregon State do that? That's going to play a huge role in whether Oregon State can land an impact transfer quarterback or one of those big time transfer wide receivers that you were talking about, Angie. And, and see, this is where it gets sticky, Carter, is because. There are programs out there that guys are being offered. Now, this is all under the, you know, back channels or whatever. But I know for a fact, guys are getting offered five figures just to commit yeah. to a school or to sign with a school. And then, oh, there'll be more. I, I'm hearing seven figure deals. I, I, it's mind blowing for someone that hasn't. I do like how Oregon State is doing it where they're rewarding the players. Although, Carter, so did you see on social media the other day that um, Jake, uh, Jake Overman and Isaiah or Isaac Hodgins were going to clean gutters yesterday. I did see that. Yeah. Mo, I mean, U of O, those guys are just collecting cash for doing <laughs> nothing. So, um, but good for those guys for going out, helping the community. Um, but I, I digress. Um, the collectives, I, I don't have any, um, I still have never spoken to anyone from the damn nation. Um, and I'd like to, because I still don't have a, a really firm grasp on that one. Um, giant killers is kind of where I've been telling people if they ask me where, where to go, I say giant killers, um, because that I know hundred percent is going to Oregon state football. So, um, that's where you want to be. Good answer on the, uh, on the collective front there. We will see how big of a player Oregon state can be, uh, in that market. Any, anything else that you want to touch on here in these questions, Angie? I'm just looking, uh, Hatton signing early. I, I don't know about Hatton, but uh, Tasting Reddix is enrolling early, um, signing, enrolling, as is Aiden Childs. So those are the two I know of. Um, mm -hmm. Alex Austin declaring for the NFL. I have not heard that he is. Last I heard is that he is looking at potentially sticking around one more year. Um, and the fact that he didn't walk on senior day could yes. um, could be an indication. Of There's that. actually, I mean, I'm hearing some rumblings of a few guys that might surprise um, that are considering coming back. Uh, the one that excites me the most is James Rawls because I, he did walk senior day and I hear he is considering coming back, which would be huge for that defense because I felt that he got better every single game. One of the very underrated players on the line and somebody who I thought went under the radar last year as well. Uh, JRU asks, is this year the last Rose Bowl as we know it? Um, the answer is no. The 2023 season will be the the final of the four team playoff. Now that the Rose Bowl has agreed to be part of the 12 team playoff, so we'll th we'll see things change in the 2024 season, uh, which I guess would be the 25 Rose Bowl if they still play it on January 1st or 2nd. Um, but no, you will get you will get one more traditional Rose Bowl next year unless it's part of the four team playoff rotation, um, which I'm not sure. I, I would need to check on that because this year it is the Fiesta and the peach. peach. Um, so it's possible that Rose Bowl will be included, in which case, yeah, this would technically be the last, you know, quote unquote, Rose Bowl as we know it. Um, so that's that's the answer there. I think that's pretty much it. We already answered Martinez's availability for the bowl game. Sounds like he'll be good to go. 
Uh, if there's anything I, I skimmed over, Angie can stop me, but otherwise I think we can go ahead and get out of here. How many players are on the injured? I'm just looking at the comments um, on the injured list that were starters to begin. Oh, I don't even. I don't have a running list. Yeah. But, I mean, Musgrave I mean, comes to mind, really. I mean, everybody I'll say else it's, is... it's, it's a lot. It's a lot shorter than it was yeah. going into the Oregon game. Uh, Anthony Gould missed the Oregon yeah. game. Didn't get a chance to ask, but I mean, that's a question that'll come up next week, I'm sure. Um, he's r really the only recent injury that I can think mm -hmm. of um, that, that didn't return last week. No, I think there's exciting. I mean, Carter, how exciting. I mean, we've spent a lot of years where this early December, we've already moved on to basketball. There have been years where I've been running like position group grades and like season recaps this time of year. And here we are two weeks away from a bowl game. And and then what the, the new year, January, we'll probably start doing. Yeah. I was, was going to say, you're not going to be doing recaps until January. Yeah. Sweet. It was a nice Re change of pace last year. And I'm glad yeah. we, we get to do it again. And of course, uh, going to a bowl game, that's, that's even higher up the PAC 12 ladder. So, uh, so Oregon State recruiting. and Florida. Oh, I was going to say, well, yeah, so what I'm starting this week, just so you guys know, is we're going to have VIP uh, recruiting outlooks. So we're going to be taking position by position groups over the next week and a half and diving into those and kind of who's on, who's not um, long term, looking at what what we have. There you have it. That's uh, a good reason to head to Beaver Blitz and grab a subscription. Our, our Black Friday deal and Cyber Monday deal is officially uh, come to an end. But if you hop on now. Get the, get the full price subscription. You do get uh, a free year of Paramount Plus included in your annual Actually, membership. I think for the next day, maybe day and a half, it's 50% off an annual. And then it goes to full price and you get the Paramount Plus, which I hear, Carter, I don't know if you've seen this movie, but I hear Maverick Top Gun is going to uh, Paramount Plus. Yeah. yeah. There's <laughs> Have a, you seen it? I, I haven't seen it, no. What? But, but I probably will now since, uh, since I've got Paramount Plus as as part of Beaver Blitz. So um, if you haven't seen Top Gun Maverick, there you go. Yes. Subscription okay. to Beaver Blitz gets you some Paramount Plus. Uh, you can you can watch, uh, I guess, Yellowstone's on, on Peacock, unfortunately. It, it airs on Paramount Network, but um, plenty of great stuff on Paramount Plus. If you're a movie fan, uh, any Paramount movie is on there as well. So that is included in your subscription if you wait until all of the, the promotions are over. But... Angie, uh, let's reconvene in a week. Preview let's the full game, huh? Yes, let's do it. How exciting. Beavers, Gators, Vegas Bowl, baby. Sounds great. It's not quite as good as Core Vegas versus Stark Vegas I know. in Las Vegas, um, but it's close. It's close. We'll take it. Yes, I agree. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us live on YouTube, listening anywhere. Uh, you get your podcast. Thanks to the people in the lodge at Beaver Blitz for dropping their damn questions. Again, an another reason to head to Beaver Blitz. Uh, if you want your question answered on the damn podcast, dropping them in the lodge at Beaver Blitz is a great way to do so. Angie and I will be back next week to preview the game, and then we'll head down to Las Vegas and cover it on Saturday, December 17th against the Florida Gators. Oregon State going to the Las Vegas Bowl. We'll talk more next time on the damn podcast. Until then, you can follow her on Twitter at Machado one You can follow me at Carter Baines. And we'll talk to you next week for another episode of the damn podcast. Mm -hmm.